Hey guys, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 instructional video. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through chapter 11, nucleic acids, big molecules with a big role. In other words, DNA, RNA. We're going to be talking about genetics a little bit, some of the chemistry of genetics. First things first, if you want to study genetics or learn about the chemistry of genetics, you have to understand some terms. Nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are strings or polymers of molecules known as nucleotides. Nucleotide, write that word down. Nucleic acids and nucleotides. A nucleic acid is essentially created from a set of at least four of these nucleotides. You can have more, but it has to be at least four. All right? A set of four nucleotides in a given sequence. Now, nucleotides have three components. A nitrogenous base, in other words, a base that contains nitrogen essentially, a five-membered carbon sugar, ribose or deoxyribose are the sugars that we are going to talk about, and a phosphate group. Now, phosphate, remember, is PO4 minus 3. Okay, that's a phosphate. And then DNA, we'll look at how uh, phosphates interact in these things called nucleotides. Here are your nitrogenous bases. There are two of them, two types. The purine and the pyrimidine bases. Now, notice the numbering system. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, the numbering system of the bases is not that critical in this course. I just want you to know it exists, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. I just want you to know that numbering system exists. Because later on, we're going to start talking about uh, 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime. So I want you to understand why the prime is there. So just for now, just understand that the, these bases are numbered. Okay? Now, there are four different nitrogenous bases found in nucleic acids. There's four different ones. Each base has one of two nitrogen-containing aromatic rings, either a purine or a pyrimidine. You're one of the two. There are four bases but they're grouped as purines or pyrimidines. Those are, these are like, if you will, these are the classes of the bases that we're going to talk about, okay? Purines, pyrimidines, and there are four of them, okay? Just stuff you got to know. Just, unfortunately, it's just memorization stuff right now. Here is your first nitrogenous base, adenine. Abbreviate it with the letter A, Okay? This is a purine. Both of these actually are purine. Adenine and guanine, which is abbreviated with letter G. These are both purine bases because they share that uh, two-ring system. Notice they're different. Here we have a carbonyl. And on the same carbon over here, we have an amine. So they're, they're quite different. They're quite different. Notice over here we have an NH2. And here we simply have a hydrogen. So they're very, very different, but they're still categorized as purines. These are purine bases, okay? So far, so good. Adenine, guanine. Now, adenine and guanine are both found in RNA and DNA, which we'll talk about later, okay? Just for now, just write the structures of these down, draw them, pause the video if you have to, and just write down the structures. Draw them carefully. Draw them carefully. Pause the video if you need to. Now here, we have our pyrimidine bases. Pyrimidine bases. Now there are three of them, two of which are found in DNA, thymine and cytosine. But RNA, instead of thymine, has uracil. Okay, now the structure of cytosine is right here. It's a purine because it only has one ring. These are both purines over here because they only have one ring and the two nitrogens, right? Then notice the difference. Here, there's a CH3 and a carbonyl. This molecule is missing the carbonyl, has a nit nitrogen in its place. And instead of a CH3, there's an H right there. There's the differences. Now, they're, <laughs> I think you're all going to admit they're extraordinarily similar. They are indeed extraordinarily similar. But these differences that I'm pointing out are very small. Some would say subtle, but they're extraordinarily important. Okay, so just kind of jot these structures down. Draw them as carefully as you can. Pause the video if you need to. Just get these structures drawn, okay? Now, here's uracil. It's in RNA only. Thiamine is in DNA only. 
Notice the structural difference. They're essentially the same, except for uracil is missing the methyl group. Uracil is missing the methyl group. Everything else is the same. All right? Now, these are your pyrimidines. The other ones were purines. They have two, two rings. Pyrimidines have one ring. Next is the sugar. Next is the sugar. Now, there are two types, there are two sugars you have to know in dealing with DNA and genetics ribose and deoxyribose. Now, you all know, and I'm sure, that DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. Ribo. Oh, I hope something just went off in your head. The little alarm bell just went off saying that's where those words come from. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribo is this. So DNA is built with that sugar. RNA is built with this sugar. That's seriously, that's one of the major differences. Now let's examine these sugars closely. Notice the numbering system, one primed, two primed, three primed, four primed, five primed, pardon me. <clears throat> now, when you see a number and that little symbol right there, that's known as a prime. That little symbol is this called prime. So you would say five prime. Now, the reason why these are primed is to differentiate them from the numbers that the nitrogenous bases had. Remember I point out the numbers in the nitrogenous base? Well, they, they do have numbers. And to differentiate them from the sugar, we call these the sugar numbers prime numbers. So one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, five prime. And these numbers represent the carbons in the ring. Okay? The reason why they're primed is to differentiate these atoms and this numbering system from the nitrogenous base. So far, so good? So let's just take a look at the two sugars and the differences. Now, here we have the two, oops, here we have the two primed carbon, and here we have the two primed carbon of the ribose sugar and the deoxyribose sugar. Notice at the two prime position, the OH of ribose has been replaced with simply a hydrogen, simply a hydrogen at the two primed location. All right. At the two prime location of ribose, OH is removed and hydrogen is put back. This is why it's called deoxyribonucleic acid. And it's missing the oxygen at the two primed carbon. Okay? You have to know that. You have to understand that. Deoxyribose is missing the OH at the two prime carbon. Instead of an OH, there's an H there. All right? Now, Let's see how we put these bad boys together because they have to come together to form nucleotides, right? So here we go. Now, notice that the one primed carbon is going to bond now with the nitrogenous base. They're going to form a glycosidic bond. This is another type of glycosidic bond. In carbohydrate chemistry, the glycosidic bond is an ether bond. In nucleic acid chemistry, this is a amine bond. It's a very complicated amine bond but it's simply an amine bond. It's a glycosidic bond. Now, notice this nitrogen, we'll put a little star by it, and this carbon, the one prime carbon, let me move it to a different location. The one prime carbon are going to make a bond. When they do that, they make a molecule of water. So this is indeed a condensation reaction where the nitrogenous base is attached to the one prime carbon. Now, the cartoon way we draw it is like this. Okay, and this is called a nucleoside. Nucleoside, not nucleotide, nucleoside. When we add the phosphate, it becomes a nucleotide. Okay, so this is the first step in making the DNA strands or the DNA molecules. You have to make a nucleotide first. First thing, you put the base with the sugar, get it what's called a nucleoside. Now we're going to make nucleotide, or we're going to talk about nucleotides. Nucleotide contains the nitrogenous base, the sugar, and the phosphate. You have to have all three. Nucleoside has only the sugar and the base. Nucleoside only has the sugar and base. Nucleotide 
as the sugar, the base, and the phosphate. I didn't make this stuff up. I wasn't my idea to make the name so similar. This is the way it is, okay? Nucleotides, base, sugar, phosphate. Nucleoside, sugar, and base only. Now here are the four, sorry, five, excuse me, five nucleotides you need to know. First one, adenosine monophosphate and deoxyadenosine monophosphate. Okay. Notice the base, the sugar, and the phosphate. And notice the phosphate is at the five primed carbon. The phosphate is at the five primed carbon. The phosphate is at the five prime carbon. In all the examples, not just that one, it's in all the examples. The phosphate is at the five prime carbon. The nitrogen is always on the one primed carbon. So the nitrogenous base is always at the nitrogen. Oh, sorry, pardon me. Always at the one primed. The phosphate's always at the five prime. Always. All right? Now, you might want to take a few minutes, pause this video, jot these structures down. I, I know it's a lot. I get it. It's a lot. And I never said DNA wasn't complicated. <laughs> so don't worry. We're going to get through this together. It's not as bad as you think. But pause the video and jot these down. Now, let's go over a little bit about naming nucleotides. I'm not going to belabor this point too long. Um, but just to give you an idea of how to do it, there's a table down here that kind of illustrates how it's done. It's pretty straightforward. Um, some pretty obvious things. You know, there's the RNA and the DNA nucleotides. Uh, fairly straightforward. Just notice that uracil is with RNA. Thymine is with DNA. And also notice here when you're naming the nucleotides, the RNA variant nucleotides do not have the D in front of it. The DNA ones do have the D, little d in front of the abbreviation. And that D stands for more than likely, I mean, I'm just going to go out on a limb here, deoxy. It's because it's DNA, deoxy. So that's the difference there. Um, fairly straightforward. Just remember that uh, a nucleotide is the phosphate, the sugar, and the base. All right. Now, 11.2, we're going to go over a little bit about how these nucleotides come together to form nucleic acids. Very straightforward. It's no harder than chemistry you've already seen. Okay. So now here we have one nucleotide, and here's another nucleotide right here. These bad boys are going to come together at the three primed end right here. That's the three primed, three prime carbon, okay? Now, that three prime carbon, the OH on it, is going to bond to the phosphorus. It's going to make a bond to the phosphorus to form what is known as a phosphor, phosphodiester bond, okay? Phosphodiester bond. Now, the three primed. Uh, OH is going to bond to that car uh, phosphorus, and that phosphorus is on the five primed carbon. Okay, so in other words, it's going to make a bond. Uh, sorry, in other words, carbon number uh, three primed is going to bond to carbon number five primed through this phosphodiester bond. And here it is, right here. There is the phosphodiester bond right there. There's three prime right here. And there's five primed right there. So it makes a bond between the three primed and the five primed carbons going through a phosphodiester. And here's an example of the nucleic acid backbone. This is, if you will, this is the primary structure of DNA or RNA, depending on what you're looking at. So here's the five primed end, five primed end. So the three primed end is on the other side. And that's how uh, DNA and RNA is written from the five primed to the three primed. Notice phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, and so on. It will just keep repeating. The differences are the bases. These are the bases hanging off here. Okay? So these are your uh, nitrogenous bases. So they're hanging off. Okay? Now, you can abbreviate that to this right here. GTCA. These are the initials that tell you the name of the nucleotide that's bonded there. All right. 
and this is how you would draw a single strand of DNA or an RNA strand. This is how they're drawn. Okay. Now notice these are little cartoon boxes. These are not uh, Lewis structures. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be using cartoon boxes and Lewis structures to kind of explain this because uh, DNA and RNA are extremely complicated. So we have to kind of use cartoonish drawings uh, to kind of simplify it a little bit so you can understand the basics. And then uh, maybe later on in this course, or if you take another biochemistry course or genetics course, they might get a little bit more involved in the Lewis structures of everything. But don't worry, we're going to see some Lewis structures too. All right, guys? So now that's the end of chapter 11.1 11 .1 and 11.2. So with that, I'm going to wish you guys good luck and good chemistry.